Like so many of my vlogs, this vlog is an answer to a common question I get. Freelancing versus working for somebody versus starting your own business, starting a SaaS, creating your own software and selling that software into the, into the world. So let's look at them very briefly. Getting a job is probably the easiest route to go. You develop your skills, step one, you develop your foundations, whatever you want to do. So let's say we're doing the web, you got to do your HTML5, CSS, your JavaScript, then, you know, a little bit of design chops, and then you could probably get at least entry level work as a web designer. Now, to make that uh, a little bit juicier, you probably need to add in perhaps a touch of React, maybe React.js. Uh, a little bit of bootstrap, of course, just a little bit, and you can get in there. If you want to really maximize your chances of getting a job, then you want to get into the server-side programming. So that would be programming on the server. I'm talking about web server, if you don't know what this is, just do a good beginner's course. If you want to program on the server, you've got many choices. You can do it with JavaScript. You can do it with PHP. You can do it with Python. You can do it with Java, you can do it with C Sharp. Which one to choose depends on the type of work you want to do. But good entry level work, you're probably going to find jobs doing server side PHP. Uh, number one, then I, number two, I would choose JavaScript. Number three, I would choose Python. This is for web development. I'm talking about web development. Okay, let's move on from getting a job. How about freelancing? Freelancing, again, you got to do your basics, your HTML, your CSS, your JavaScript and put up a nice site, that's step two. So for step one, for freelancers, you put up, you learn your basics. Step two, you put up a nice looking site. Step three, you reach out and you start talking to small business owners. You may have to do one or two free, first jobs for free, that's normal. But then you're gonna start picking up more and more clients. If you can add in some, again, for freelancing, PHP skills, that will add up quite a bit in terms of, you know, that will increase rather the chances that you're going to get a job, you're going to get jobs once you start doing server side. You know, you, you be, once you do some basic PHP, you know, do shopping cart stuff, installing carts, configuring carts, that kind of thing, and maybe kick in some WordPress skills, theming, basic configuration, and so on. Then you're going to have a, a lot of potential work for you in terms of a freelance web developer. Now you could get freelance work as a JavaScript web developer, but I've heard anywhere from 60s, the high 60s to the 80s, 80% 80 of small businesses run on a PHP-based background. It's just the way it is. And I can tell you, they're not going to want to change off of PHP unless they absolutely have to. So learning PHP as a freelancer just makes dollars and cents, not just cents. Uh, again, before you judge Node.js guys or your Java guys or your Ruby guys start going crazy and saying, telling me how PHP sucks. First of all, it doesn't suck. Second of all, um, I'm not saying PHP is superior in terms of the technology over other solutions. I'm just saying that a lot of businesses use it. And if you understand anything about business, business owners are loath to trash something they spent a lot of money on or they have something invested in. They're going to want to continue. That's just the way it works. So it's a business decision more than a tech decision when you're looking at the languages that you're going to choose for freelance work. And of course, number three, creating your own software. This can be the most rewarding in the end, but is also far more difficult than becoming a freelancer. With freelance work, once you know your basic, you, your basics, you can be up and running within a month or so, you could probably start getting gigs, right? And within a year, you're probably going to have a lot of gigs. Whereas a SaaS that could take years and years to develop and it could possibly fail. In fact, in terms of uh, VC-backed software-based products, VC venture capital, 80% of them fail. 80, 85%, something like that, they fail. And in fact, the investors, they count on that. They actually factor into their equations when they're investing all of their money. They're investing a little here, a little here, a little here, a little here, a little here. They assume that 80% are going to go, boop, nowhere. So keep that in mind. So the hardest thing to do is to develop SaaSes. I've developed a, a few, and I've had some successes. Nothing stellar, but successful. And um, yeah, that's just the way it is. It's difficult, and it takes time. So if your ultimate goal is to get into building your own software that you want to sell into the marketplace, whether it be web-based or... Uh, 
an app that you sell in the app store, which is whew, that's really hard to do nowadays, by the way. Um, and just because there's so much competition, but it's doable. The approach in that regard is to first get out there, freelance, develop your chops, develop your skills, develop your workflows working on other people's projects, get some cash flow, get some contacts going, and understand the uh, business environment. And what will happen is that as you do more and more work in the real world where you're, you're, you're actually dealing directly with clients, you're going to have a better understanding of how business works. You're going to start seeing opportunities that you would not have seen otherwise. And then from there, you're going to say, okay, I'm going to start developing a SaaS on the side. That's what I did. When I developed a, uh, first one that comes to mind is my online dating site. And I shut it down many, many years ago because it got invaded by all these swingers and it was growing. But I didn't want to become the swinger coder. I've talked about this in other videos. So I, I shut it down. Maybe I shouldn't have. But uh, anyway, um, again, it was a side project that I was developing while I was doing freelance work. And so I had money come in for the freelancers. And in fact, because of my freelance work, it gave, me an, it gave the opportunity for this dating site to actually start to grow because of contacts and stuff. I won't get into the specifics here. So that was a, a key part of it, now that I think about that. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to find yourself in the end uh, developing your own software, doing the freelance route is a good way to get there. It's a, it's a, it's a way to, to, to bridge that. Again, being a freelancer can be extremely lucrative. You make a ton of money, much more than you could working as an employee. Uh, and that comes down to not thinking, oh, what's my per hour rate that I'm going to charge? No, no, it has to do with workflows and efficiencies, coding and development workflows and project management workflows that will maximize your, profit, your, your, your profitability. And you can make a fortune as a freelancer. But you just got to know what you're doing. Anyway, I hope this video helps. Cheers.